What's up, everybody? My name is Godzi, and welcome back to another episode of Wonderful Every Day. Last episode, Zakuro and Kimika got fucking chased by Shiroyama and his gang before... <laughs> and almost got probably killed. But Takaji showed up and saved the day. Great. <laughs> this chapter's fucking crazy so far, though. Like, describing it in one sentence like that doesn't really fucking make it sound that great, but still, it was insane. <laughs> Zakuro called Megu a bitch, after all. <laughs> that was some cool shit. But either way, let's just continue now. Everyone's looking at us. <laughs> they are. The atmosphere in the classroom was as uncomfortable as ever. But the hate from before had disappeared. It had been replaced with confusion and ostracization. Of course, the confusion stemmed from the incident last night. It was huge. We could only thank our lucky stars that we were alive today, and that the police hadn't gotten involved. It's different from before, but the atmosphere here still doesn't feel very good. <laughs> you might be right. It didn't feel like we were being bullied anymore, but it was like we had become objects of fear, like Akasaka and Kitami had been before. After the two of us checked that our seats were safe to sit in, Kimika whispered in my ear. Sadako and Megu aren't here today, huh? You're right. Maybe they're just not here yet? Not yet, huh? Do you really think they'll come to school after that? They weren't injured or anything. They weren't injured, but their pride definitely took a hit. They brought together all those people, and they still couldn't beat one guy. Yeah. Mami Otakuji really was strong. I'd heard rumors, but... Yeah, I, but I heard rumors that he used to get bullied, too. I wonder which one it is. Though, there's no way he just took up martial arts recently. He must have been practicing since he was a child to do that. I guess so. Yeah, it was almost like Aikido. But Aikido isn't useful in an actual fight unless you do it for 50 years. 50 years? Yeah, no matter how talented you are, you can't use Aikido in a real fight without tons of training. Then what about Mamiya? He must have been doing it since he was really young, and he's obviously been in a lot of fights, too. I don't think it's possible he was ever bullied. I bet he spread that rumor himself so people wouldn't know he was such a thug. He spread it himself? I wonder. He definitely was strong last night, but the mommy I've always known wasn't like that. I don't know how to describe it. <sighs> You've been thinking about him all day, haven't you? Eh? No surprise, I guess. He was the one who actually saved you, after all. Of course you'd be thinking about him. Her face looked really sad for some reason. She must really hate Mamiya. But he's a good person. He even gave you back your knife. Yeah, I guess so. I don't think he was a bad person, like you said. I know, I know. I know that much. Sorry, I guess I said something weird. She still didn't have a good impression of Mamiya, even after he saved us. It was like she hated him even more for doing it. Do you still hate him? Hate him, huh? I still don't like him. I know that sounds strange, since he just saved us. And besides that... Besides that? I'm just frustrated by my own impotence. No, it's nothing. That's not important. More importantly, he called you his toy. He's the worst. Did I miss a line or something? No? Okay. Oh, uh, that was probably just a figure of speech. <laughs> I still can't forgive him. All men are total pigs, not just Mamiya. After last night, I know that better than ever. Ah. <sighs> Why does she dislike him so much? It always looked like they were getting along when they talked, too. Actually, is Mamiya at school today? He wasn't injured after the incident last night, so there's no reason for him to skip school. Though he did say something strange. Hurry up. I only have today left. Starting tomorrow, it looks like someone a bit more peaceful is going to take the role of Mami Atakaji. Yeah, that definitely was a weird line. Which makes me think very strange things about Takaji being not real? Question <laughs> mark? Come on. If you want to get revenge on me for all the pain I've inflicted on you, now's your last chance. What did he mean by that? Those words seemed out of place. Why would he say it's their last chance? 
If you're that worried, why don't you go look for him? Eh? He's probably on the roof, right? You have a lot you want to ask him. A lot you want to talk to him about, right? Kimiko smiled gently. Yeah, thank you. But I wonder why her expression looks sadder every time I look at her. Yeah. You probably want to know what he went, what he meant when he said last chance, right? Yeah, I can't stop thinking about it. <laughs> You're so honest, Sakuro. Shouldn't you go ask him right now, then? You have to do it before it's too late. There aren't too many things in this world that can slip through your fingers if you don't grab them when the opportunity presents itself. I think there's something you need to say to him before it's too late. <laughs> don't look at me like that. I'm just talking in generalities. I'm not telling you to do anything. I just thought there might be something like that... Blah, blah, blah. I just thought there might be something like that you wanted to say. Anyway, you should go see him. Go talk to him. And... He's the one who can really protect you. There's no guarantee Akasaka and Kitami won't try to get revenge again. But then what about you? Shouldn't you go too? I don't want him to save me again. I'll manage on my own. Ah. Oh, sorry. Why did I just shout like that? Maybe I'm so on edge because of what happened yesterday. Kimika. Anyway, just go. It's gonna be lunchtime soon. Heck, if you two want to go to the infirmary for fifth period, I'll cover for you. <laughs> After she said that, she looked down, avoiding eye contact with me. Why? We're finally free from the bullying. What's she so upset about? I was a bit confused. Okay. Akasaka and Kitami didn't come to school that morning. All of the students who got beaten up by Mamiya were absent. I heard rumors that some of them were hospitalized. At noon, Kimiko went to buy some bread. She didn't say a word to me. I decided to take her suggestion and head to the rooftop. Well, he's certainly there. But what's he like? He was reading, like always. Hello. I was always frightened when I talked to him before. But this time I managed to say hello in a calm voice. Uh, you again? He looked at me like I was a pest. He seemed like the Mamiya from last night. Is today's Mamiya the version that's not acting? Okay, it's... He's in this mode right now. What do you want? I don't want anything. I just wanted to say thank you. I don't need your thanks. That was just a game to me. You could say that's one of my hobbies. That's one of your hobbies? Yeah. My hobby is hurting people. Really? Yeah. Mm. But you didn't hurt me. You actually protected me. It's no fun hurting someone like you. You're already powerless. It's more fun to beat up the strongest people I can find. That's all. I looked at the book he was reading. As always, it looked like a really hard book to read. What are you reading today? What's the matter? It has nothing to do with you. Um, it says Unlearned Ignorance. <sighs> yeah, that's right. It's by Nicholas Kusanas. What's it about? It's a theology book. Theology? Like Christianity and stuff like that? Yeah, something like that. Um, are you a Christian, Mamiya? <laughs> Why would you think that? I hate religion. He spoke without a hint of emotion in his voice until he got to the word religion, which he spoke with disgust. Oh. Dog bark. Does he really hate religion? You hate it? <laughs> I'm sorry. I just thought that might be why you're reading that. Is there any reason someone who hates religion shouldn't read theology? Oh, no. I don't think that at all. So, is it fun reading stuff you hate? Not at all. It's not? It's too complicated. I don't know what any of it means. Too complicated? But you're still reading it. Yeah. What kind of book is it? Just what it says on the cover. Then it's about learned ignorance. That's right. Is that so? This hardly even qualifies as a conversation. <laughs> he keeps analyzing everything I say. He's totally different from the mommy I met here before. How can I make this conversation work? We have to have a real conversation if I want to talk to him about anything. Maybe I, maybe if I ask him some questions? Um, what parts don't you understand? Pretty much all of it. Oh, 
but specifically. Mommy glared at me. Shoot, I guess I was too persistent. For example, let's say there's a circle on a plane. Okay. Take any point on the perimeter of the circle and expand the circle from there. What would happen? It would be bigger than the first. Yes. The edge of the new circle would look like a curved line, right? But what would happen if the circle was infinitely large? Eh? An infinitely large circle? Um, the curvature would gradually de decrease. Yeah, that's right. As the circle grows larger, it comes closer to being a straight line. But what would happen if it was inf infinitely large? What would happen? Kusana said it would become a perfectly straight line. Would it? Hmm. Jesus Christ, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, mathematically it has to be a straight line. If you take any two points A, B on the perimeter of a circle and call the midpoint C and the point within a tighter circle D, well, I guess it would be easiest to think of it as the curvature becoming infinitely small. Really? You probably learned it in class when we learned about repeating decimals. Um, did we? Well, there are a lot of students who can't understand that 0 0.999 is equal to 1. The teachers hate teaching it because so many students refuse to accept it. Oh, huh. 0 0.999 is a number with an infinite number of 9s, right? Is it really equal to 1? The theory behind it is kind of complicated, but it's not hard to understand intuitively with fractions. For instance, 1 third equals 0 0.333. Yes. Then 2 thirds is of course equal to 0 0.666. And then if we multiply 1 third by 3, 3 thirds equals 0 0.999. That should make sense. Huh? I guess so, but that's really strange. 3 over th 3 over 3 is supposed to be 1. Then what part was wrong? What part was wrong? Uh... You won't be able to come up with anything. There's no mistake. If you accept that 1 third equals 0 0.333, then you have to accept that 3 thirds equals 0 0.999. Then the only way to solve the contradiction of 3 over 3 being equal to both 1 and 0 0.999 is to accept one simple thing, that 0 0.999 is equal to 1. In other words, the repeating decimal 0 0.999 is in fact not slightly smaller than 1, but actually identical to it. That's what infinity means. Kusanis' example of a circle follows the exact same pattern if you think of it as the distance between C and D. I see. I don't get it at all. I heard his grades weren't good, but I guess he really is smart. And besides... When I asked you, you said you didn't understand that book at all. You wouldn't be able to give that kind of explanation if you didn't understand it. Yeah, you're right. What don't you understand about it? Well, I just find that stuff really interesting. He was a cardinal, a mathematician, and a philosopher. And he had a great influence on the philosophers that came after him. According to him, his idea that the curvature of an infinitely large circle forms a straight line is perfectly consistent with the logic of our finite world. Infinity can solve any contradiction within our world. Within infinity, all contradictions cease to be contradictions. So then, this is the problem. Why was he so fascinated with infinity? What was the infinity that he spoke of? Um, he was a theologist. Does that mean he was talking about God? That's right. This book basically says there's only one God. A single infinite being. In other words, it's a book that tried to prove that God is infinite. Just like 0 0.999 is equal to 1, God is one and everything. Oh, I don't get it. <laughs> Me either. <laughs> um, that's kind of hard for me to understand, but it seems like you understand it just fine, doesn't it? No, I don't understand it at all. Huh? For instance, Kusana says there's one single infinity, but that's a lie. It's a lie? Yeah, there are different kinds of infinities. George, I'm assuming that's supposed to be George, George Cantor discovered that 400 years after Kusana's death. Infin infinities have density. It can be proven with the diagonal argument. Kusana said that there is one infinite, infinite god, but in reality there are different kinds of infinity. 
And more importantly, his book doesn't even prove the existence of God. His claim that all contradictions cease to become contradictions within infinity doesn't prove his claim that God exists. And he used a triangle to prove the justice of the Trinity. Um, um, I can't follow his explanation. He was a theologist and a mathematician, and he tried to use math to prove the existence of God. Is that right? Then what's a cantor? Calm down. Calm down and think. First of all... Um, what's a cantor? Is it some kind of software? Did you install it? Ugh. No, no. He doesn't look happy. Cantor was a guy he brought up, right? What do you want? I've been trying to drive you away by going on and on about stuff you wouldn't understand. And yet you still keep trying to continue the conversation? Um, do you mind if I sit next to you? Yes, I do. <laughs> oh, he rejected me just like that, but I won't give up. Then what about across from you? Don't sit across from me either. Then how about behind you? Are you gonna stare at my back? That would be creepy. Huh? You don't mind? Of course I mind, that's even worse than the others. Um, do you really want nothing to do with me? Uh, you really are a stubborn woman. I'm sorry, I just wanted to know more about you. Why do you need to know more about me? I don't need a reason just to learn about you, do I? And besides, why are you reading a book you don't like? I don't read books I don't like. That's a lie! Earlier when I asked if you were having fun reading that book, you said, not at all! When I used a much stronger tone than before, Mommy looked surprised for a moment, and then he laughed. <laughs> You're a strange woman. Why are you taking me so seriously? Mommy looked up at the sky. Alright. Might be nice to talk to someone at the end. At the end? Are you going to transfer to another school? No, I'm not transferring. Then... He shouldn't say the end like that. Sounds like he's sick, or he's going to commit suicide. He shouldn't say that. Don't worry, Mami Otakuji won't die. You'll probably be able to meet him anytime you want, and he'll probably be much kinder than I am now. So nothing bad is going to happen. I don't understand what you mean. Or rather, I don't understand anything about you! You don't, huh? Yes, you leave me with a different impression every time we meet! different impression, huh? I guess so. Yes, your personality, your hobbies, your actions, everything about you changes too much from time to time. I guess so. Now that I think of it, the Christian that Roxanne knew looked, uh, looked like one person, but in reality had the body of Christian in the mind of Cyrano. He wasn't one person. He was acted out by two different people. Neither the handsome Christian nor the intelligent Cyrano could attract the attention of Roxanne, who's both beautiful and smart. Cyrano de Bergerac, huh? Oh, we have our pockets full! Our lady loves phantasms of our brains, dream fancies blown into soap bubbles! Come, take it, and change! Vain loved words into true. I breathe my sighs and moans haphazard wise. Call all of these wandering lovebirds home to nest. Come, take it. You'll see that I was in these lettered lines. Eloquent all the more, the less sincere. So you read it enough times to recite it from memory? Yes, I read it over and over. Why would you read the same book so many times? You read it over and over too, didn't you? So I wanted to find out what you were really thinking when you said you liked this book. I see. So you want to know what he thought when he read Cyrano de Bergerac. So I've read it over and over, huh? And, when you read Cyrano, read Cyrano, what did you think? I thought a lot of things, but there were a ton of things that applied to you. Or rather, places where you overlapped with the text. Overlapped, huh? Okay, for instance, what? There were two men who changed feigned loved words into true but it was the one imaginary man who Roxanne loved. And how does that overlap with Mamiya Takuji? Um, do you have a twin, Mamiya? A twin? 
that's sometimes that happens sometimes in manga, right? It seems like there's someone who looks exactly like someone else, and it turns out it's that person's twin. For instance, <laughs> I see a twin, huh? So your theory is that Mamiya Takuji has a twin? Oh, but the Mamiya I met underground was completely different too. So that would make three of them. Excuse me, I want to revise my theory. And how so? Are you triplets? Or maybe there's one real Mamiya and two lookalikes? Alright, triplets or two lookalikes. That would be pretty convenient, wouldn't it? It would make it really easy to skip school. Are you saying I'm completely wrong? Who knows? Maybe you're on the right track. Okay then. In order to get closer to the beautiful woman Roxanne, they needed two personalities. One who was handsome, and one who was intelligent. Hmm, I think you've convinced me. I think now I can understand why she loved reading Cyrano so much. She? Yep, hmm. That's right. Me, and her, and finally, Mami Otakuji. Maybe it was necessary for us to accomplish something. To accomplish something? Accomplish something? So Mamiya needed a body double to accomplish something? In other words, there's more than one Mamiya. That must be it. Um, Mamiya, do you all have different names? He didn't answer. He just looked at my face. Would you tell me the name of today's Mamiya? I can't do that. Why? I want to know your real name. My real name, huh? Let me ask you this. Since you read Cyrano so many times you can recite it from memory, did Cyrano, who acted as Christian's mind, wish for Roxanne to know who he was? Huh? When Cyrano died, Roxanne found out that he had been the source of Christian's wit, but it was completely unexpected. It was like an accident. Cyrano hid it until the moment of his death. Did he wish for Roxanne to find out who he really was? Did Cyrano wish for it? I slowly recalled Cyrano de Bergerac's plot. Christian and Cyrano both loved Roxanne. They worked together to act out a single person and attract the attention of Roxanne. But since Christian acted as the pair's outward appearance, he was the one who Roxanne fell in love with. It's only natural. Intelligence has no physical form, whereas a handsome face does. <laughs> I don't know why the music's going all orchestra on me right now, but something's about to happen. People don't fall in love with shapeless ideas, but rather physical people. Roxanne couldn't love Cyrano's immaterial intelligence. She could only love Cyrano's intelligence when it was given the form of Christian's outward appearance. Cyrano himself is immaterial. That's why Roxanne fell in love with Christian, not Cyrano. So Cyrano had to play the fool in front of Roxanne. Cyrano could never be anything to Roxanne. Even after Christian had died. He had to keep playing the fool in front of Roxanne. I breathe my sighs and moans haphazard-wise, call all these wandering lovebirds home to nest. There's a deep significance to those words. The person who dreams and the person who acts. The fantasy is ended by action. A fantasy can exist only in its fulfillment, unfulfillment. Rather, our lady loves the phantasms of our brains, dream fancies blown into soap bubbles. It is the lover of our fantasy that we fall in love with. Cyrano's love was fantasy only because it was unfulfilled. Christian's death is irrelevant. Even after Christian died, Cyrano never told Roxanne that he had acted as Christian's wit. But the truth was revealed when Cyrano read Christian's farewell letter in front of her. Though in truth, it was Cyrano's farewell other letter. Roxanne remembered his voice reading the letters. But Cyrano denied his own existence. He denied that he had been Christian's intelligence. That's right. What do you think of that, Takashima? Cyrano's feelings. Maybe he really didn't want Roxanne to find out his true identity. He definitely acted to keep it secret from her. He always, always kept it hidden from her. Mamiya compared Cyrano to himself. There's only one thing he could possibly mean by that. Alright, I won't ask anymore. For now, at least. Ugh. For now, huh? Yes, just for now. <laughs> What's funny? 
No, it really is funny. The Takashima I knew wasn't like that. You've changed. Uh, have I changed that much? Yeah, you're completely different from before. I never would have imagined you acting like this after seeing the way you were always so scared before. Maybe so, but it's not like I was scared when I was talking to you. You weren't. Yes, I was nervous. <laughs> really? Yes, I always look forward to coming here and talking to you. I see. Glad to hear it. What's with your reaction? I'm saying it to you. Oh, really? I guess you are. So, for now, I won't ask anymore, but please tell me someday. Someday, huh? I'll see. I, I see. What do you mean, you see? Please, just tell me your name. Mamiya was silent. Now that I think of it, you said there was something you had to accomplish, didn't you? Yeah, I did. What did you mean by that? It's something that can't be done alone. So we took on multiple forms. That's all. Are you talking about Cyrano? Nah. I'm talking about God. God? God takes the form of the Trinity. Kusanis said that was because the triangle was the smallest polygon. Kusanis? That's the book you were reading, right? That's right. He said the triangle was the smallest constituent element of all other polygons. In other words, it is one. God is the trinity because the triangle is the smallest. According to his theory, the smallest is equal to infinity. Even God needed three forms to accomplish something. So naturally, so do humans. Creation, harmony, rebirth. Humans also need each form. Are you talking about the Christian God? No, that's a personal matter. The Christian God doesn't have a privileged position. A privileged position? He's not privileged over others. Well, that's not important. <laughs> Look, lunchtime is over. You're right. We didn't even get a chance to eat. Yes, we were talking the whole time. Here. Uh. He threw some bread at me. You can have that. Uh, but... It'll be fine, just take it. Okay. Um... What? Um, what did you mean by the end? I didn't mean anything. Forget about it. Tomorrow will be the same. A normal, peaceful day. See ya, Takashima Sakura. Oh, uh, sure. A peaceful day, a normal day. Seems like I haven't had one of those in a long time. Lately, I haven't been able to take anything for granted. That's just how we've been living recently. Hey, Mamiya! What? Will you still be friends with me, even if our days are peaceful? He looked troubled for a moment, and then he said, Of course. Come here anytime you want. Hyphens. Lots of hyphens. I couldn't hear the last words he said. But I think he said he would be happy to talk to me any time. Hmm. The end of summer. Uh, okay. <laughs> Just like he said, the next day was peaceful. And the day after that, and the day after that, they were all peaceful days. After that day, all the bullying stopped. Not only Akasaka and Kitami, but the rest of the class stopped looking at us so coldly as well. Though Akasaka and Kitami kept avoiding us. Mami acted normally after the incident as well. One thing did bother me, though. Mamiya was the person from before. He wasn't the Mamiya who protected us. He was the kind, sociable person. The one who seemed to light up the world. He never again showed me the same expression from that night. Actually, this happened too. Uh, this is the book I borrowed from you. Thank you very much. I shouldn't have kept it so long. Huh? Oh, really? Hmm, okay. I think I'm somehow right in thinking that this version of Takuji is supposed to be Yuki. The one from before is Tomasane. I don't know what regular Takuji, so to speak, the one whose sprite is in here. 
I don't know if that's just Takuji Takuji or what, but whatever. <laughs> uh, I don't know who it would be, actually. <laughs> but, whatever. Unless it is just Takuji, and that's all there is to it. But, whatever. <laughs> I'm sure we'll figure it out eventually. Huh? Oh, really? Huh? Oh, sorry, sorry. I guess I forgot that I lent it to you. <laughs> I thought I'd lost it. Really? <laughs> sorry, I have a really bad memory. I always forget stuff like that. So you're laying low again? Huh? Oh, nothing. You told me you talk like that when you're laying low. Huh? What are you talking about? Oh, uh, it's nothing. Oh, and what about the others? How are the other two triplets? Triplets? I don't know any triplets. The twins seem to be getting along fine, though. Twins? Oh, <laughs> who are they? I don't remember Mamiya talking about twins before. You've really changed, haven't you? Have I? Yes. From the mommy I last met here on the rooftop. From the mommy I met in that underground room. And even from the mommy I first met here on the rooftop. This one was different from them all. The peaceful days will continue on. Maybe that's why Mamiya wants to keep acting like that incident never happened. Maybe that's why the Mamiya from that time doesn't show himself. The days when Kimika and I fought against Akasaka and Kitami, and the night in the park where it all ended. Maybe it really is an unnecessary pass for the peaceful days of the present. Maybe that's true for Mamiya, too. There were always bad rumors about him floating around before, but now his reputation is getting better. He's cheerful, and his grades are good, and people like him. People seem more open to me and Kimika as well, since we were friends with Mamiya before this happened. Kimika just seems troubled by the attention, though, since she doesn't get along with people very well. But mysteriously enough, Kimika's aloof attitude actually made people like her more. <laughs> now that I think of it, she was always she was always cute. She's no good at sports, but she's pretty smart too. There was never any reason for so many people to dislike her. Bullying is just like that. There doesn't need to be a good reason. Depending on the circumstances, sticking out can either cause someone to be bullied or cause them to be adored. As Mamiya's reputation changed, so did ours. But eventually, the popular Mamiya grew distant from us. Peaceful days. Ongoing peaceful days. Were you thinking about Mamiya Takuji again? Nah. <laughs> Seems like you haven't talked to him lately, huh? Yeah, or rather, it doesn't feel like I can talk to him. He's so popular. What happened? He's always so awkward before, but now he's completely different. Yeah, you might be right. You like him, don't you? <laughs> You're still saying that? But... Tummy. I took her hand. Do you want to skip class? Nah? Let's skip. But... But what? Sakura, that's kind of... Kimika's face went bright red. I pulled her hand. Wait, uh, Sakura, that's kind of bold. <laughs> I grabbed my bag and pulled her hand. Uh, I have to get my bag too. <laughs> the teachers were chasing us. Oh, yeah. You tried to walk right out the front gate. But Akasaka and Shiriyama did that before, didn't they? But you're supposed to be a good student. Not at all. I just couldn't decide anything by myself. I obeyed the rules just because someone else had decided them, but... Huh. Oh, what? Just like Mommy had changed, there were a lot of things inside me that had changed. Excuse me? <laughs> the most important thing to me had changed. Before, the most important thing to me was simply not upsetting anyone, but the person I was before had disappeared. When did that happen? When I first started to like Mamiya? Mamiya certainly did change me. Mamiya gave me the courage to move forward under my own power. But, oddly enough, once I took that step, the wonderful future I had envisioned suddenly changed. His form, which had been foremost in my mind, changed once I took that step forward. This might be a rude way of saying it, but I didn't think he should be the most important thing in my life anymore. Because he was splendid enough on his own. He had everything he needed on his own. 
I didn't feel anything for him anymore. Ugh! What are you so scared of? Sakura, there are so many people around! You don't need to worry about that. Mm. <laughs> okay, what the fuck? <laughs> when I took that step forward, the scenery changed. The unusual became usual, and the usual became unusual. <laughs> what are you doing all of a sudden? Kimika complained, her eyes wet with tears. Kimika is always like this. Would you rather I asked first? That's not the problem! Jeez, I thought you were supposed to be a bullied girl. You're supposed to be the submissive one. I'm not a bullied girl anymore. That's not what I mean. Hmm, I thought you were a masochist, but I guess you were really a sadist. <laughs> I don't know about that. After all, you were the one that suddenly attacked me that day. That was... You didn't want Mamiya to take me away from you? That's... Uh... Jeez, you took my... Um... What? And yet you get worked up with a kiss. That was... Uh... I was kind of desperate. Desperate? Why did she... Did, did something happen off screen? Did I... Or did I accidentally skip a scene? Something's fucky here. Or was that just a joke? <laughs> um, I just wanted you to stop... I just wanted to stop you from going off with him. And I got carried away. You got carried away and did it with me. Ah! <laughs> Kimiko's face turned bright red as she turned away. Isn't that right? I'm sorry. Hey, what's this? Are you teasing me? Not at all. I'm just asking you a question. Ugh, Sakura, you're kind of a bully. I'm not bullying you. If that's what you think I'm doing, would you rather I kiss you again? That's... That's what? Ugh. No, no, this again. Jeez, I hate you! Go die, you piece of shit! <laughs> okay. Oh, now I've done it. She's so cute, I can't help but bully her. I'm sorry, Kimika. <laughs> it's like the reverse of our relationship before. People are funny. <sighs> Kimika! <sighs> You're just as fast as ever, huh? No, it's not that I'm fast, but rather... Well, more importantly, I'm sorry. Sakura. Hey, how many times have we repeated the same pattern? <laughs> I can't help bullying you sometimes. You're too cute. How many times have I heard that excuse? <laughs> Sorry. Then promise me. Promise you what? You won't bully me or say you won't kiss me anymore. <laughs> Whoa, don't hug me. Yes, yes. I promise, Kimika. Oh, what are you doing? Are you trying to show off your boobs? Okay. <laughs> a lot changed after that. Every day was different. Actually, at the end, this happened. That was July 19th, the last day before summer break. At the end of, s of the semester, I went up to the rooftop to talk to Mamiya. And when I got there... Ah. Oh, hello. <laughs> I almost forgot that you're a character. Takashima Zakuro. Your name was... Otanashi Ayana. Oh, right. I think I've seen her before. Did you come to see Mamiya Takaji today? Yeah, I did, but... How does she know that? Mamiya won't be coming to school today. Really? Did he catch a cold? He didn't catch a cold. Today is the day before the 20th. The day before the 20th? Yes. Therefore, the two will have their final battle. What? Their final battle? Yes. The Mamiya from the underground room was supposed to be the victor. But because of your choice, his soul has changed directions. His soul? Yes. The world of souls. The repetition of souls. His soul's string has been severed from the repeating world's model. He's now fated to walk a different path. Um, what does that mean? <laughs> It just means that you made the correct choice. Everything is as desired. 
Takaji the Creator and Takaji the Destroyer died together, and Takaji the Harmonizer alone remained. Oh, huh. Okay. Everything is as he desired. As Tomasane desired. Ooh. Okay. Tomasane? <laughs> the soul is endlessly reincarnated in the same world. That's why I'm here. Now, you too must move forward. The promised land awaits you. The wonderful every day is beginning. Um, do you know all of Mamiya's secrets? Secrets? Just now, you were talking about Mamiya the Creator, Mamiya the Destroyer, and Mamiya the Harmonizer. What is that? <laughs> yes, but the answer is not for you. You've obtained the wonderful every day, and now you've lost everything besides. That's why you can't obtain that answer. Or maybe... Ayana grinned. I felt a chill run up my spine. Would you like to give up all you have now? Would you like to see the soul take a different direction? Hmm. I... I made my choice. I can't give up what I have now. I've sworn to live my life to the fullest. Alright. Ayana gave another, smaller smile, and then looked at the sky. That sky is no longer there. Here. The lost sky. The world of just one soul erased that sky. The girl who has decided to live her life has obtained the wonderful every day. Hmm. I still don't know what she meant by that. I never saw Ayana again after that. I heard rumors that she had transferred or dropped out, but I never knew for sure. To be honest, it seemed irrelevant to me. The question I asked Ayana on that day, even that question seemed irrelevant to my life. Hey, Sakura. Nah? <laughs> What's wrong? Oh, sorry. Lost in thought again. Geez, Sakura, you're always like that. <laughs> Not at all. More importantly, summer is ending, huh? Yeah, it's starting to get a bit chilly. The summer will end, fall will come, winter will come, and then it'll change to another warm spring. Yeah. I walk through the chilly park. I move forward. Huh? What's wrong? Oh, no. It's nothing. What is this feeling? It's a strange unease. Like I feel uncomfortable about something. It's really strange. What's a hold up? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. When I heard her words, I understood. I see. So that's what it was. This feeling is probably the same feeling I felt when I took my first step. I just forgot the feeling until now. This is probably what my first step felt like. It's not just me, either. Everyone felt this when they took their first step. It's the same feeling animals must have felt when they first started to walk on land. I felt nervous about my first step. There's no mistaking it. After all, it's my first step. It's the beginning of a new, of a new scenery. But eventually, that single step becomes an everyday experience. The single step into tomorrow that I so feared. That was a common scene. It became an everyday routine. It became easy. It became incredibly normal. What is it? Nothing. Hey, Kimika. What? Thank you. Eh? Thank you for walking by my side. Thank you for helping me take this step. Eh? Huh? Uh. Kimika hesitated. Of course she did. I was a bit too sudden. I've always been like that. Though I never had the courage to say what I was thinking. That's why she hesitated. Yeah. Kimiko laughed cheerfully as she responded. Thank you, too. For walking by my side. <laughs> the wind was just a little bit chilly. As the chilly wind blew in our faces, we held hands and walked forward. Okay. <laughs> the first step into everyday life. We took one completely normal step into the future.
We are grateful for every moment. As we move forward in life. As we go, let's laugh together. I promised myself in my heart that we would. Just like so many other life forms. I too took that first step. What lies before me? Is probably a wonderful life. Hmm. Oh, yep, credits are there. My mic was just in the way. <laughs> huh. I'm not gonna lie. I was told that this chapter was shorter than it's my own invention, which, yeah, it very clear it was. This is only the alternate ending, though, so I'm still gonna do the true ending starting next episode, but that was shorter than I thought it would be, won't lie. <laughs> that was really cool, though. That was really interesting. I feel like we got, like, an answer, at least, about, uh, Takuji. There's still a lot of questions about him. I mean, this chapter in general is creating a lot of questions about, like, who he really is. But, somehow, he seems more like a puppet than an actual character? I don't know if that's just because of Zakuro's perspective or if that's reality? The fact that there's... Tomosane Takuji, and Yuki Takuji, and Takuji Takuji. And, yeah, I feel like we, I really, really need to somehow see Tomosane's perspective. I'm hoping that a later chapter is Tomosane's perspective, because I feel like that is the one perspective that I really need to see in order to understand a few more things, because, hmm. Holy questions. <laughs> Ayana's perspective might be interesting too, but I don't know. She showed up once in this chapter, at least on this route, and all she did was spout cryptic bullshit and disappear, <laughs> because that's just Ayana. But that was very interesting. Uh, I'm still definitely confused, because why the fuck wouldn't I be? But <laughs> otherwise... That was a pretty good... That was pretty good. I liked that a lot. That was very cool. I think, like, what I liked the most was just how they stood up to Megu and Satoko. Just all those different methods, all Dr. Octopus style that Kimika had of dealing with them. Like, just pulling a whip out of nowhere to deal with Shiroyama and the others. That was fucking insane. But then, um, also at the same time... Like, her Xenon flashlight and explosive test tubes and crap like that. <laughs> it was just really cool, honestly. How it kind of felt like almost a cat and mouse game between Sakura and Kimika and then Megu, Satsuko, Shiroyama, Nishimura, Numa, Numata, etc, etc. <laughs> I, I, honestly, last episode, I think Numata's whole role last episode was fucking hilarious. <laughs> How when Tomasane Takaji was just beating the shit out of everyone, Numata was just standing at the sidelines like, Yeah, I told y'all! <laughs> I knew we would get fucked up by this guy! I told y'all to not fight him, but you're just stupid! <laughs> I think Numata's just fucking hilarious in general, though. But, yeah, that was... That was good. I liked that. The end of summer. Nope, still going, I guess. That day. What Kimiko always called that day. I don't remember the exact date. Well, that's actually a lie. I even remember the exact time when it happened. But I pretend like I don't remember. I like to mess with Kimiko by playing dumb. Kimiko wants me to feel responsible for it until I die. She doesn't want me to abandon her until I die. She wants to be together until the end. Well, that's not important right now. This is, in my opinion, 
the most important day for us. What Kimika always called that day. Uh, okay. Uh, Sakuro? Kimika, I was looking for you. Looking for me? I was at my club. You could have come to the club room if you wanted. But you're in two of them, so I didn't know which one to go to. Okay, but more importantly, what have you been doing while waiting? You're not in any clubs. I... I, uh... I laughed and tried to play it off. Though it's not like I needed to hide it. The rooftop again, huh? Rooftop? The rooftop? Oh, so she thinks I went to see Mamiya. I don't really understand her. At first, she was always telling me to go see him. But since summer break started, she's gotten really upset anytime she's heard about me talking to him. Which one is it? That's what I want to ask her. Jeez. What's wrong? Are you in a bad mood? Not at all. No, oh, she really is in a bad mood. Jeez, Kimika, what's the problem? I'm not mad, but it's like we can finally see each other again now that summer break is over, but you're... You don't like me talking to Mamiya all the time? That's not it. It's just... I know how you feel about him, so I know why you're prioritizing him, but... She was misunderstanding something. She must have thought that my relationship with Mamiya changed over the summer. But nothing like that happened. I just had a normal summer. I never met up with Mamiya. I just spent my summer studying. If you wanted to see me that badly, you could have called me during the summer. Maybe, but... I was trying not to get in your way. I don't feel that way about Mamiya anymore. Why would she need to worry about getting in my way? What did you do during your summer break? Nothing. I went to summer school and I studied at home. I see. Well, graduation is pretty soon, but still, you must really like to study. I don't like studying. It's just something I have to do. Learning about science has been particularly useful, you know? <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. Though the humanities aren't good for every for anything. They're useless even after graduation. Okay. What? Are you making fun of the humanities? Yeah, more or less. Mamiya likes that crap, doesn't he? Math seems to be his forte. What forte? All his grades are bad. Mamiya's grades certainly were bad at the beginning of the semester. <laughs> but his grades had been way better than Kimika's on all the tests since this semester started. Especially in math. Well, your grades are good, but... What is it? I don't like it when you make fun of people like that. What do you mean? It's not like I'm making fun of you. That's not the problem. No, I guess you don't like to hear me say bad things about Mamiya, huh? That's not it. You shouldn't say bad stuff about anyone else either. Why? Because you're so kind, and yet you always talk like that. Everyone assumes you're a bad person because you do that. Who cares? They can think whatever they want. Does that mean I can think whatever I want, too? Why would you say that? You're saying you don't care if I dislike you, right? That would be a problem. For me. For you? Nah! Anyway, I don't care what strangers think. But you're not a stranger. Then what am I? Nah? Um... Why is her face getting all red? We're friends, right? Oh, yeah, that's right. We're friends, so we can talk bad about other people. Or rather, I can't help talking like that. That's just my nature. Of course you can help it. You can't get rid of bad habits if you don't work to correct them. So let's try to fix that bad habit. Alright, if you insist, I'll be more careful about what I say. Why are you acting so rude? You, must, you really must be in a bad mood after all. Why would I be in a bad mood? It's pretty obvious right now. We haven't seen each other for so long, and you... You're in a bad mood because I went to see someone else even though we haven't seen each other in a while? You went to see someone? So you did. You were with him. No, it's not like I was with him. Is that what Kimika thought? I kind of wanted to ask what she's thinking. <sighs> so? How was it? How was what? I'm talking about Mamiya, of course. Uh, nothing really happened. Why? You two have kissed by now, right? She really was misunderstanding something. I didn't feel that way about him anymore. You know, I've said this a few times already, but I don't really... Like I said, 
You should stop trying to hide it. You're just making excuses for yourself. What? I'm not making an excuse. And just what does she think we did? She's starting to get on my nerves. <laughs> I should tease her a bit. Uh-oh. But I've never kissed anyone before. I don't even know how you're supposed to do it. You just have to put your lips together. It's simple. Oh, so you've done it before? Eh? Huh? Me? Yes, you. You can only say that if you've kissed someone before, right? Uh, um, well... Oh? Were you showing off even though you had never done it yourself? Don't underestimate me! I've had at least one kiss before. Or at least half a kiss. What's half a kiss? You're getting ahead of yourself, Kimika. Oh, so you have kissed someone. Yeah, I have. Then show me. Huh? Show me how it's done. Like I can show you that. I happen to be single right now, for complicated reasons. <laughs> That's right. But I wonder if you're telling the truth. As far as I've heard, you've never had a boyfriend before. Ugh. What kind of person were you dating? You should be able to tell me that if you've kissed someone before, right? Uh, I can. Oh? What kind of person was it that you kissed? Kind of... Kind of like... A boy? Then why do you care? Why should I tell you that? It just seemed like you were lying. That's all. No way! That's rude! Hmm, okay. I understand. What? You don't believe me at all, do you? That's not what I mean. I'm just saying you can't prove it. Well, don't worry about it. Now I understand. You're always going on about science, science, but you don't actually- but you don't care about actually proving the things you say. What? Do you want to do an experiment to prove me wrong, then? Prove you wrong? Ah! No, no, it's nothing. Forget I said anything. Her face suddenly reddened. Hmm? What? No, uh, it's nothing. Really, it's nothing. <laughs> she looked away. What's she thinking? Wait. Oh, by experiment, she means... Um, I'm sorry, I said too much. I felt embarrassed, too. Then Kimika... Um, Sakuro, are you sure you don't want to, uh, do a kissing experiment? Or maybe practice? Eh? No, uh, you said something about an experiment, so I just wanted to ask. <laughs> don't worry about it. A kissing experiment? Practice kissing. No, it's not like I'd be practicing to kiss someone else, so I can't really call it practice. Kimika doesn't know, but that would be my first kiss. It's not just practice for me. She said it so casually, too. Alright, show me then. Huh? With you? Is there someone else you'd like to kiss to demonstrate? No way! If it's you, then... Then you can do it? Yeah. There's no way we could actually do it, though. We're both girls, she's just being stubborn. <laughs> Been a while since we've heard the phrase, We're both girls, haha. Huh? You really don't mind? Eh? Like I said, is it really okay if I kiss you? Uh, sure. Huh? It wasn't just a joke? Or is she still being stubborn? Um... Eh? What? Huh? Why is she tearing up? Um, could she be... There's no way she's really going to kiss me, right? Um, are you being serious? Eh? Oh, uh... Uh, uh, um... What? Why are we talking about this? Um, um... We were talking about practicing or experimenting or something like that. I only egged her on because I thought there was no way we would ever actually do it. Now my heart's thumping too. Why's that? Wasn't it all a joke? After all, this is my best friend, and she's a girl. She was my ally when we fought the bullies, and, uh, I shouldn't be getting nervous about this. But a kiss? Um, an experiment? You mean, you're going to kiss me? Oh, uh, I'm just saying, sometimes people practice with their friends. Something like that? <laughs> oh, haven't you ever read any magazines like that? They always talk about girls practicing with their friends. <laughs> It's not a big deal at all. Well, I've heard of it before, but I wonder if that's true. Who knows? I'm kind of curious myself. Yeah. I definitely read about it in a magazine before. There was a reader submission where someone said they'd practice kissing with one of their friends. 
so maybe it's not that strange after all. Kimika certainly is my best friend. Maybe it wouldn't affect our friendship at all if we did something like that. And yet? Um, uh... My heart was beating wildly in my chest. What? What is this feeling? Sorry, that's pretty gross, huh? Huh? Not at all. Huh? Nah. We were alone in the evening classroom, but my voice echoed in the hallway. Uh, I really like you, so it's not really gross at all. We're friends, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, we're friends. And I was the one who brought it up. Um, can I take that as an okay? I could hear her heart beating in her chest. Her face was red, like she had just run a marathon. Maybe my face looks the same. Probably. It's just an experiment, right? Oh, yeah. It's just an experiment. I didn't even need to ask, huh? Uh, yeah. Well, is it okay if I go ahead and do it? Yeah. Well then, I'm beginning the experiment. Oh, sure. Her hand touched mine. I could feel it quivering, and it was covered in sweat. We looked into each other's eyes. Um, could you close your eyes? Huh? I don't think I can kiss you if you keep looking at me like that. Oh, okay. You're supposed to close your eyes when you kiss someone. I shouldn't have stared like that. <laughs> this is the first time I've ever seen your face from so close. Yeah, I've never seen your face this close either. As I looked at her, I couldn't help thinking, she really is cute, isn't she? She probably got bullied by Akasaka specifically because she was so cute. There's no other explanation. Um, could you close your eyes? Oh, okay. I closed my eyes, just like she told me to. Her fingers dug into my hand. I felt her breath. I never felt anything like that before. My teeth started chattering out of nervousness. Mm. Ah. Um, Sakura? What? I can't kiss you when your mouth is so tightly closed. Should I open my mouth? No, you don't need to open it. But if you could let go of the tension in your lips, I think it would work better that way. Oh, sure. Got it. It'd work better that way, huh? I slowly parted my lips. <laughs> Her tongue darted into my mouth. Oh, great. I never felt anything like that. I couldn't believe a kiss could feel so good. Her tongue was so warm and soft. Okay. <laughs> How was it? Nah. Um. It's over already? <laughs> I'm not sure yet. Really? Oop, did not mean to write quick. Yeah, I know it feels good, but I'm not sure if I understand how you're supposed to do it yet. Oh, I was pretty much just kissing you, huh? Okay, then, you kiss me this time. Kiss you? Yeah, you kiss me. Sure. I slowly moved my face closer to hers. She closed her eyes. Maybe I was supposed to close my eyes at this part too, but I wasn't used to this. Seemed like we were going to hit noses if I wasn't careful. I looked at her face until the last moment. Soft skin and beautiful lips, I wanted to kiss her more. <laughs> our lips came together again with a muted sound, the soft sensation of our lips touching. Our bodies drew closer. As we pressed our lips and bodies together, our warmth seemed to melt into one. Kimika's tongue danced and twined itself around mine. Okay. I heard the sound of our saliva mixing and the sound of our tongues caressing each other. Okay, the CG again. She pushed her tongue deep inside my mouth. Okay. Her lips didn't show any sign of drawing away from mine. Quite the opposite, we began to kiss even more violently than before. I wanted to fear her more. I wanted to be closer to her. That's what my instincts told me. At the very least, in that moment, I didn't know what to call my feelings for her. My instincts just urged me to keep going, to keep kissing. We kissed and kissed seemingly for an eternity. Sakura, are you... Huh? Uh, it's just... Okay. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Do I need the sticky note? <laughs> we haven't seen any, like, actual eight scenes yet, so I'm scared that you're gonna just throw one at the very end of the alternate route. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I can't stop myself. Eh? You can't stop yourself? I've been holding myself back. I told myself I could never do this with you, but now I can't stop. Whoa, wait, Kimika! Sorry, I know you have Mamiya, but... I know you have him, but... I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry, but I've always... Um, that's not the real problem here. I'm sorry, you'll probably hate me for this, but I can't keep holding myself back, Sakura. Hmm? <laughs> okay. Sakura, I love you. <laughs> okay, sure, whatever. This is out of nowhere. <laughs> I mean, fine, but... <laughs> I always thought she was small and weak, but when she held me down, I couldn't stop her. She was crying. Why would she cry while doing this? There's nothing to cry about. Kimiko, what were you holding back? What is it you always wanted? I wanted to ask her that, but her lips never m left mine. She didn't even let me ask that question. Kimiko, you don't need to cry. I don't understand, but if you're holding back for my sake, I'll do anything for you. Because you're the best friend I've ever had. Because for a long time, I felt her tears running down my face. I just closed my eyes and let her do as she pleased. She put her hand on my blouse. She kept touching my chest. She kept fondling my chest, even though she always seemed so upset about it before. Blah, 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 you're sorry. Yeah, I got it. She started undoing the buttons on my blouse, and her other hand moved towards... Okay, yep. Alright. <laughs> time to go a little faster, at least. Nope, I'm not reading this. <laughs> I'm not reading this out loud. Okay, yep, there we go. That needs to be censored. That is one at 106.20. Boop, boop, do, 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 do. <laughs> so this is what they were talking about, and they just skipped over the scene until now because I don't know. Oh, no. Okay, we have a second thing on screen that needs to be censored <laughs> at like 106.58-ish. Alright, whatever. I mean, I guess... Hmm. I wasn't told that there were none on this route after all. Oh, wow, okay, already? Sure. I'm gonna have to be very, uh, specific about censoring, I guess. Because I don't fucking know. Oh, no. They're <laughs> it's still going. Okay, I thought it was over already. All right, guys, chill. You're in a classroom right now. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's stupid. Okay, I don't, I don't know, dude. Since I'm not even reading the text, I'm probably just gonna leave a black box on the right side of the screen. Because, yeah. I, I just genuinely don't care. It's easier to censor that way, too. <laughs> All right. Okay. Alright, dots. Looks like it's over. <laughs> For a few minutes, we just held each other, still naked, but our wits returned to us when we heard voices in the hallway. Kimika, quick, your clothes! Huh? No! If someone sees us, we'll get expelled! Uh, yeah, I know! <laughs> What's so funny, Kimika? <laughs> I'm sorry. Are we just supposed to practice kissing? Yeah. Then how did it end up like this? My bad. Is that all you have to say? Uh, sorry. Kimika, I'm not going to forgive you for this. Um, what? Are you going to press charges for sexual assault? Oh, right. I definitely could do that. Wait, you're going to do that? 
Is there a problem with that? Well, I don't know how long I'd last in jail. Right, so then are you going to take responsibility? Huh? Responsibility? That's right, responsibility. You're not going to report me to the police? You need to take responsibility. Now, how are you going to do that? Responsibility? What exactly do you mean by that? It's because you were suspicious of me and Mamiya. That's why you did this. Oh, uh, well, I mean, I know about you two and all, but there's nothing between us. Huh? There's nothing between me and Mamiya. I haven't seen him once all summer. Really? That's right. There's no reason for us to meet up. Huh? But... No buts, now take responsibility. Y yes ma'am! I don't have any feelings for Mamiya. Does, does that mean... That's right. And that was the end of that. Or maybe I should say that was the beginning. One month later, time passed so quickly and summer was already over. The seasons changed, from summer to fall, from fall to winter, from winter to spring. Um... What? What were you muttering about just now? Oh, sorry about that. I was just thinking about something. Thinking about something? Yeah. Well, oh, and that's how my perspective, the scene that Takashi Mizakuro sees, comes to a close. The two of us lived happily ever after, but this is the end. Goodbye. Farewell to days past, and to a new future. The two of us together from here on out. Hello. Okay. <laughs> that was... interesting. Hmm. <laughs> okay, I did not expect the route to end exactly like that, but whatever. <laughs> Alright, I guess I already gave my thoughts on the route earlier when the credits were actually rolling, before that extra scene or whatnot so yeah next episode we'll start going down the true path which i'm assuming is probably going to end with the suicide or something so that's going to be a bit more sad i guess this was the happy ending and that'll be the more sad ending so yeah that's going to be it for this episode guys if you liked it then be sure to press the like button and if you didn't like it then fuck you too Remember to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and hit that notification bell to stay up to date on all my videos and stuff. And as always, my name is Godzi, and I will see you all next time. Goodbye! Yeah.